What was the story of enslavement in Egypt? What was Pave? What's going on? So the simple level of the story is, he was a dictator. He was ambitious. He needed cities built, or he was afraid of the Jewish uh, population overwhelming the Egyptian population. And so he enslaves the Jews. What does he ask them to do? Build him houses made out of mud and, and straw bricks. On a, on a much more sophisticated level, Pharaoh was very, very intelligent and evil on a very sophisticated level. He believed himself to be God or one of the gods. And he took a look at what God himself says, does, want. And he saw that God demanded that the Jewish people devote themselves to his project. And what is his project? Making God a home in the lowest world. Yes, he knew that. Thinking that he's God, he imitated God. He said, I'm going to take the Jewish people. They're going to become devoted to serving me and build me home from the lowest level. And so they didn't, they didn't demand that the Jews build houses out of rock, masonry. He wanted them to build them homes using the lowest material that existed. Mud. Baked with straw to hold it together and so on. So you're taking the lowest materials available and making it a home or a building for the king himself. In this case, the king is Pharaoh. When Moshe comes to the people and says, God wants you, is waiting for you at Mount Sinai, what he was literally saying was, you've got the wrong king. You have the wrong project. This is other gods. Now, other gods imitate God, but this is not where you belong. You're supposed to be doing exactly this, but for the true God who is waiting for you at Sinai. Now, when Moshe comes to Pharaoh and says, you got to let the people go, for some reason, he said that we needed to go into the desert for three days for a holiday. And for that holiday, we're going to need to offer sacrifices, to have uh, roasted meat. So we're going to have to take our, uh, our cattle with us. Pharaoh says, no, there's a plague. Pharaoh says, no, there's another plague. Pharaoh says, okay, maybe, but then he changes his mind. What is all that about? And why were there 10 plagues? Why not one really effective one? Why drag it out? Why torture the people rather than give them the one plague that will sober them up and liberate the Jews? So if you look at the conversation between Moshe and Pharaoh, not on a childish level, where Pharaoh was just a stubborn, foolish king. Moshe comes to Pharaoh and says, we need to serve God in the desert. 
Pharaoh's argument was, what's in the desert? What are you going to do in a desert? Here, you're productive, you're building, you're improving the country, the society, the world. There's a future here. To this day, scientists can't figure out how these structures were built, the pyramids. Not that the Jews built the pyramids, but there was a technology available to the people back then that we still don't understand. How could they carve rocks using their primitive tools? How did they transport such huge rocks with the primitive rope and, and pulley that, that they had at their disposal? Obviously, there was, there was knowledge there, there was sophistication there, that somehow has been lost. There seems to be no evidence. What machinery did they use? We're puzzled. And then it comes to embalming. How is it that they could embalm a body that keeps it fresh, to whatever degree, for 4,000 years? They were so sophisticated, so advanced, in areas where we think we're advanced, but we're still behind them. So Pharaoh is not a simple, uh, stubborn, mindless dictator. So he says to Moshe, this is the future here. You're contributing. Okay, you're working hard and maybe you don't enjoy it, but, but here you'll amount to something. If you go out into the desert looking for God, you're just, you're just going to kill yourselves. You're going to end up dying out there. So I'm not letting you go, not simply because I'm stubborn, but because it's, it's irresponsible. It's reckless. Anyway, after a few plagues, Pharaoh softens up a little bit, and he says, all right, if you insist that you must go, take a minion, you know, take a few guys who are really spiritual and go out there and see what you find. Moshe says, no, the young and the old, the men and the women, all of us, we need to go, the entire people. So Pharaoh says, no, that's crazy. I can't let you do that. So there are a few more plagues and Pharaoh says, all right, go. but leave your cattle here. It'll kind of motivate you to come back. Moshe says, no, we need all our cattle. In fact, we need some of yours because you never know how many sacrifices God is going to demand. So Pharaoh says, all right, you're crazier than I thought. I changed my mind, you're not going. So each plague moved Pharaoh and through him, the entire Egyptian people, to a greater recognition of the true God. What was the last plague? The last plague was when Pharaoh realized that the Jews are not asking for permission to go out into the desert to develop a religion, to search for God, or even to worship. He finally heard what Moshe was saying. Moshe was saying, God is waiting for us at Sinai. Don't even know what he's going to ask of us. We don't know what he's going to tell us. He's waiting for us. He called us to a meeting at Sinai. This is not human beings 
looking for a divine experience. This is not human beings trying to be spiritual. That would be dangerous. We've seen evidence of that in our time. People going out into a desert to have some religious experience and they end up killing themselves. So Pharaoh finally realized, I, I got this all wrong. Jews are not looking for God. God is looking for the Jews. Jews are not trying to be religious. They're just responding to God's call. He had never considered that. Obviously, idols don't call you. Idols don't set an appointment or a rendezvous and say, come meet me here or there. It's all the human being's imagination or, or spiritual interpretation of things. It's human beings creating a God or a religion. For the first time, Pharaoh heard what Moshe was really saying. This is not about us. This is about God and we can't refuse God. And to this Pharaoh said, of course you can't refuse God. Now that I realize what you're saying, then go now. Leave now because you don't mess with God. Now look at what what our history has shown. The argument that to stay in Egypt would put you in the center of human progress. You would be making a contribution to history, to the world. But if you go out and follow God into the desert, you're going to become irrelevant. You're going to end up destroying yourselves one way or another. History is the story of the Jewish people who left Egypt and did go out into a desert for 40 years, not for three days. Egypt has long ago disappeared as a major player in the progress of the world and of mankind but Jews are still in the center of everything. This is a very important uh, insight, very important message. By serving God, you are the center of human progress. If you do anything else, you'll make a contribution, they'll put you in a museum, and they'll marvel at how great you used to be. You will be mummified. Shalom Aleichem. How are you? You know I do a lot of talking, a lot of Zooming, many classes, many subjects, but that's all formal stuff. Hopefully good stuff, but formal. We also have a Wednesday night meeting that's more informal, and kind of um, Hamish. If you want to join us for that kind of an event, um, interactive, time for questions and so on. If you want to join us for this side of conversation, click on the link below and join us every Wednesday night at nine o'clock. Well, maybe not every Wednesday night, but we try to make it every Wednesday night at nine o'clock, a more informal chat, which uh, can be more enjoyable at times than the formal stuff. So check it out, click on the link and join us. Try it, you'll like it. <laughs>